Hello everyone, welcome back to a special episode of Angel Bob's Omni. Um, I have loaded up my train stuff into creative mode in a new map because I want some new blueprints and I want to be able to make bigger city blocks and um, different shaped city blocks without much difficulty. So <clears throat> I figured it's going to be a lot easier to do that in creative mode just to get the blueprints. Um, I don't quite feel like it's cheating. I think some players would would feel a little weird about using creative mode. And generally, I don't like to use creative mode just to make blueprints. But with the train stuff, it's just such a pain to to recreate, especially since my base is in the way and I'm copy pasting buildings and you have to deal with that. And it's just it's a mess. So I'd rather do it this way. So I kind of just popped into creative mode, turned on all the cheats, and I've currently made one new blueprint, which is the long I plus a T junction. Because that's what we use when we want a double wide or even a quadruple wide. So I've kind of made a quadruple section here. And I'm trying to decide exactly how I want to organize these things. I probably need a long I without a T as well. So let me erase this, and then we will grab just the regular I sections, like this. And then we really just need to connect these up. Um, feel like there should be an extra signal, but maybe we shouldn't put an extra signal. There's already plenty of signals on this single line. You know, there's enough space for one, two, three, four trains on this single straight line. That's that's plenty. Because um, if I if I add extra signals, then it'll interfere with other blueprints. So I think I prefer keeping it this way. Um, so this will just be the long I. And I also want to get all of these organized with the, I don't know what you call it, the snapped grid as well. So that's going to be a little bit of a pain. Also, my long I plus T has an extra... What is going on in that? No, I think that's right. Do I have an extra signal somewhere? In the blueprint it shows a red one. Oh, that's the, the snap to grid dot. That's what that is. It's, oh, it's a little flag. Okay, it's so small I couldn't figure I thought that was a chain signal that was red or something. And I was like, why is that there? Um Okay, so I wonder if I just copy my city block. So I'm going to do small city block. Uh, well, no, it's the normal size. We'll do large city block for the other one. Maybe I'll just say 1x1 city block there. And hit save. So the grid position is absolute 2232. I wonder if that's what we're going to need for these as well. Huh. The problem is this blueprint doesn't include the intersections on either side, so I probably won't be able to snap this to grid actually. Come to think of it. Because I'm not I'm not going to tile this. There's stuff in between where this one would be and where the next one would be. So never mind, we're not gonna snap to grid on these guys. Uh, we'll just we'll just have enough blueprints that we can easily um, accommodate whatever it is that we need. Okay, so the long I is available. The long I plus T, and then what else do we need? Is that all we need to make long sections? Because I can essentially extend, you know, like, let's say I wanted to make a new section. What am I doing? Blueprints. And I wanted it to be one by two. 
What's the easy way for me to do that? Well, I could do a long I. And then do a plus intersection. Or a long T, depending on what I want. But I want these to be blueprinted, I think, as well. So. Yeah. I think I just want to blueprint the 2x2 two two block and the 1x2 block. Yeah, and it's easy to redo the inner... Should I default to having T's or... or eyes in the middle you know like for my two by two should I default to having this blank or should I default to having this be a T intersection I actually don't know the answers to these questions um, probably should have all of them to be fair but let me, let me make a new city block here so we'll make a one by two in this corner so Let's see, so for this one, we want T's going up and down. So we'll paste our long I plus T, Get it up. Okay, so this is our one by two, and we wanna make a blueprint out of this. Just want to make sure we only get that last rail that we want there. Which means I should probably start it down here exactly in the right spot too. Um, okay, so new blueprint. We want to just get this, this one. Okay, slightly more to the left. There we go. That'll do it everything and get everything up here okay so this is 1x2 city block <sighs> now the snap to grid I have no idea how we're gonna make that work we should be able to do it um, So let's see, 1x2 city block, snap to grid. Let's just start by copying some of the, the numbers here. So 100, 100, 24, 24, 22, 23. So it's going to be 100, well, it's going to be 200 by 100. It's probably not right. Um, what was the other one? 24, 24. Oops. Okay, the 2424 I think is actually still correct. Probably. And then it was 2232 for that. I wonder how this will work actually. Oh, it is incredibly close to being correct. Uh, we are too, too high. Which feels like it shouldn't be copying the same numbers. Huh. Twenty two thirty two twenty four twenty four. Yeah, because these are still lined up properly with everything. So that's good. And so this one needs to be, what, 2234? It just feels wrong. Is it the right? No. It extends up and down the right amount. It's one square. Oh, shoot. No, it doesn't. That's why it's off. I didn't go left far enough. We don't have the signal on the left side. Dang it. Okay. Well, uh, select new contents. I thought we went far enough to the left to get that signal. And one square of 
rail. Okay, that looks like it's right. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I thought I had already done that, but maybe not. All right, copy all that. Now we've got everything one square of rail after the signal on all sides. And maybe now that will line up correctly. No, now it's still too off in every direction. Huh. I wonder why that is. 100, 100, 24, 24, 22, 23. Maybe it's the, the offset. Or maybe the grid size is too big. Maybe it needs to be like 198. Definitely doesn't look quite right. Maybe this needs to be 26. 26? Huh. It's like 202 now. 24. Maybe that's better. And 102 with 24. Let's try that. Uh, definitely not correct. That's worse. Um, and it's moving. So that means so when I move it around like this, the fact that the intersection is not staying in the same place, that means I think this is wrong. I think it does need to be 200, 100. Um, yeah, there we go. That's better. So the size is exactly double, which is what I was thinking it would be. So then it's just the offset needs to be 24, 34, I think. Yep, there we go. Okay, so we've got one by two city block with I intersection. And what's really funny is if I pasted one here, that would make that a plus intersection, which is cool. Uh, okay, so one by two city block. And that's all good. I'm going to move the one by one city block over here next to the one by two city block. And then I'm going to delete this middle part. We will replace it with the long I. Bam. And bam. And then we're going to copy this bad boy. Uh, let's see. How do I duplicate a copy of this? There we go. So this one is the one by two city block with T. This is going to be the one by two city block with I. And then we make a new contents, making sure to carefully select one. No, just one tile. It's kind of hard because you got to like guesstimate where it is. Got it. That, that'll do it. Okay, drag. Catch everything. Bam. And we should be able to leave that the same. Save blueprint. Okay. Unfortunately, if you rotate it, it breaks. Why is that? That's not good. Uh... No. Does that happen with the one by one city blocks too? It does. Shoot. I knew something was wrong. Is it because there's no dead center of this? Oh. You know what? I think it's because for it to be perfectly in the center, it would have to move three three squares, right? So if we look at like a one square or a three square large thing, 
then you can see that I could fit exactly two mining drills. So the center point is exactly three away from something. But rails only work in twos. And so all the offsets would have to be odd numbers. I mean, let's let's take a minute to try to make it work. That's what this episode's all about. But because this would have to be like one cell to the right. and one cell down, and that looks like the exact center. But then the grid size needs to be like a different, it needs to be an odd number, like 101 to 101, and that's never gonna work because this is rails, and rails are always even numbers. So I am seeing a consequence of having my rails three spaces apart. I think that's what this is. I don't know if there's a way that I can fix this. Um, Let's just play with it a little bit, though. See, and then even this has to be... Let's just try. Odd. Snap to grid has to be a multiple of two. Okay, well... That answers that question. So. So, I will never be able to rotate these. Which is really annoying. Because then I'm going to have to make a separate blueprint for that gosh I don't if you guys know of a way that I can still have this blueprinted and rotate properly even though we have an odd center let me know because that would be great but I don't I don't think I can make this work because everything would have to be odd numbers and it won't even let you make an odd number blueprint because it's trains and train snap to twos. Huh. Yeah, and that's what ruins the rotation, I believe. Because what's interesting about this is it's not symmetrical. So maybe we still... Hold on. Maybe if we just make it symmetrical, it'll rotate correctly. Maybe that's what's been wrong this whole time. Maybe this should be 98 and 98. And then the position needs to go over a little bit more. 26, 26. Maybe that's the problem. Let's try this. And that probably messes up the, yeah, the offset. No, because then it still moves. It jiggles around when we switch. It rotates perfectly, though, but it jiggles around when we... Let me do this. Uh, hmm. Okay, what about 102, 102? 24, 24. Probably the same issue. That looks symmetrical again. Um, but... Yeah, it moves, depending on which corner we're placing it on. But it does rotate correctly. Now maybe, maybe it doesn't have to matter which corner we place it on. That's a thought. No, it does matter. Because otherwise I'll never be able to place it in this square. Yeah, no, it does need to properly not wiggle. Shucks. Huh. So interesting. So... Why do these have to be exactly a hundred? That just feels strange to me. Because it's not technically... I don't know, I guess this one, this corner, nestles into this corner properly. So they all fit together to add up to equal... Like, if you imagine these squares, this is a 3x3 three three area. This is a... Well, no, I think there's a 4x4 four four area here. And this is a 2x4 two area. This is a 2x2. Two two. This is a 2x4. So all together, it adds up to the 6x6 six six that that center part needs. I think that's what it is. That's why this one works. 
and I messed up the offset, but uh, what was it? Was it this one? 24 or 34? Oh, you can't do that. Um, 26, 34. I forgot what these were. Now I've really messed it up. Um, two to the left. Uh, no, I made that worse. <laughs> two to the left and two down. 24, 34. There we go. Okay. Well, that is unfortunate. Hmm. So, that being said, I think we've determined our 1 by 2 city blocks. Maybe they'll just always be horizontal. Is that so bad? Is that really so bad? Also, the offset is too far to the right on this. Uh, so, 22. There we go. Oh wait, hold on. I'm looking at the vertical. I had it right. Oh. Okay. So since the only thing that changes is the offset, And I don't think there's a way to have the offsets ever line up. Um, we will just make it... We'll just make separate ones for horizontal and vertical. So this one is currently vertical. And it fits. Vertically. As long as we rotate it correctly. Oh, that's the other annoying thing. The snap. What if I wanted this this one plus this one to be two by two? Oh, interesting, interesting, interesting. So I actually need the snap for this. I'm really learning a lot about this snap to grid system. I need this to be smaller. Do I still need this to be 100 by 100? Um, yes, that's what I want. So it's easier to see. This is how I want it to be. See, that way it still snaps to the smaller grid, but it always fits. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, that is exactly what I want. Perfect. Okay, so that is our vertical. Gosh, this is so complicated. Uh, so... One by two city block with T vertical. And then, so we'll copy the numbers 100, 100, 24, 24, 22, 34. 100, 100, 24, 24, 22, 34. And this will be vertical. And there we go. Lines up vertically with everything. Beautiful. Uh, let me put down a radar. Super radar. Whoa. There we go. Okay. Um, so continuing along... I'm definitely going to make, I almost need a new book just for rails, because I've got plenty of other stuff that I, I use, like depots and stations. So I'll, I'll have two different books. I'll have a city block book. Um, so a new blueprint book. City block book. Ah. Click, 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 
click, click, click, click. I section. Four way exchange. T junction. Is it worth having an L junction? I don't really think so. In those cases, I can just build the four way exchange as it is. But it would look a little better if my corners didn't stick out as much. But I don't I don't know if that's worth it to me. Cause I can just have the four-way exchange ready for when we add on to those corners. So it's you know, in the long run, it's not gonna change a whole lot how many rails I use and stuff like that. Okay, so this stuff is all train-related blueprints, but the city block book is different. Okay, so we've got our 1x2 with I's and T's vertical, which is ironic because it looks like a horizontal blueprint because it's rotated. Um, but those properly line up in the vertical direction on our 100 by 100 grid. I love that it's a 100 by 100. Can I just say that? I didn't even plan that. But yeah, if we rotate, it doesn't fit right, unfortunately. So then one option is whenever I want a horizontal one, I can just change the offset. Option two is I actually make a separate blueprint. Um, I think I'm okay with making a separate blueprint. That's the whole point of this book, right? So... We'll put our junctions down here and our I sections. So these are ones that are not snapping to the grid. Although, can you do 100 by 100 still? And then 24, 24. And what was the other numbers? I'm just really curious. 2434, if that works. 2434. For the long eye. Uh, it's not looking like it, but. But there's a part of me that feels like this should be doable. Um, so what if we just offset that to the right and down? Okay, first of all, I want to stop opening both, both things in a row. So long I, um, okay, so we want to do to the right, like, 34, maybe? 44? Let's try that. Ah, that's closer. We need to go two up and a few to the right. Long I, so two up is 42. And to the right is going to be 38, I think. One more. 40. Oh, okay, that actually lines up. Oh, no, it doesn't. Because it needs to line up with the signals there. Um, so... So we go down into the right still. So down, I don't know, 48? 48? Let's try that. Okay, that's kind of close. Down to 50, right? Uh, 52, maybe. Oh, wow, that's actually close. Uh, we just need to go a decent amount to the right still. 60, maybe.
Uh, still to the right. I don't even think this is going to work. I'm just experimenting. Uh, 66. Okay, now just two to the right. 68. Okay, so that lines up perfectly there. Oh, okay, it does it does line up. Okay. I mean, that's kind of neat. So it does line up. Uh, what does it do if I rotate it? It for sure does not line up with anything. <laughs> um, but it is a horizontal eye section that lines up with anything. Gosh, I wish I can't do this now. It's too late. But I wish I could go back and change it to be four spaces apart so that I could make these rotatable more easily. But this one's interesting because you can't even rotate it twice, then the offset becomes really wrong. I guess that makes sense because we're offsetting from this intersection a certain amount, and if you double rotate it, it offsets in the opposite two directions from the intersection. So it's basically an entire intersection away from itself. I don't know if this one is worth having fixed like that. It would allow me to much more easily create these city blocks um, via the map view, though. Like, I could just build new ones. But, I mean, it takes a while. It's not like I need to build 800 city blocks or anything. I'm only building one or two at a time. So, I'm fine having this not be snap to grid. I can just place that one manually. Um, so those are all the ones we place manually. Long I plus T, long I, I section, T junction, and four way exchange. That should allow for everything I want. Um, And then the one by one city block, one by two city block. And then. So we'll put the one by one first. So now we need to copy these two. Duplicate. Uh, call this horizontal. And we'll see how that needs to rotate. Where did it go? Oh, wait. I thought I hit make a copy. Didn't I put it there? Did I make that up? I must have not actually done that. Um, okay. Horizontal. Probably I'm just going to change one of these by two and it'll fix everything. That's my guess. Whether I changed it the right way or not, I don't know. Okay, so now that's the horizontal one and. Uh, is that right? It looks right. Yeah, it's all lining up correctly. It's all blue. Blue is good. Let me actually get that radar back. So that I can see the map while I do this. Okay, so the horizontal one... Yeah, lines up perfectly. Oh, this is so cool. Can't rotate, though. Alright, so the horizontal one's figured out. Or the width... With T's. So now we need the width I... Create copy, place, rename, horizontal, and I think I just changed that to a 32, and then rotate it once. Yep, there we go. Okay, so now I can make 
All right, I got to rename these so I can see more information. I'm going to call them CBs because CB T intersection vertical. One by two CB. with I vertical Ooh, and I can even add an icon so we'll have one size one vertical or no this one doesn't have a direction size one city block and then this is a I don't know the name's good uh, it's this the icon. So we want one, it's a two size. And it's got a T intersection and it's vertical. Right? Yep. 2TV, this is 2T. No, two IV, two IV, and then we'll make this one. I may be doing a little overkill, but that's kind of the point of this episode, right? Two T H. You know, I'm thinking of another way we could have done this, maybe more mathematician friendly, it would have been having one by two blocks and two by one blocks, thinking of like matrices and stuff, um, rather than using vertical and horizontal as the delineation, we could have just said, you know, hey, the, these are just one by twos and two by ones. Uh, anyway, this is two I H. Rename CB. And this one needs the name CB. Okay. So we've got all those. And now we need the two by twos. Um, and I think with two by twos. Yeah. I'm not going to have all the permutations of I's and T's. That that seems a little ridiculous to me. What I'm going to do... Uh oh, I deconstructed the radar. Uh, radar... Uh, okay, so what I want to do here, I guess the easiest way to do it is two by twos and delete the middle, I guess, probably. Yeah. And then I'll just replace those with long I sections. So this will be an I. This will be a two by two I, and then we'll have a two by two T. And that'll be it. Okay, so then we need long I here. Long I in the bottom. I really hope none of these blueprints are messed up, or I'm gonna have to redo all of this. Uh Copy, make a new blueprint, Shazam. It's a big blueprint. Okay, we still need 100 by 100. This is it 24, 24, something 32? 24, 32, I don't remember these numbers. Uh, but this is going to be 2x2 two two city block with I. And thankfully, we don't need to worry about rotations, so I don't need a vertical or horizontal. 
So then this is going to be 4i. Okay, we're off by a little bit. Um, There we go. Sweet. Okay. So now we can make two by two city blocks really easily. And you know, that quadruples the area we have within them if we want to make more two by twos. And then finally, so I'll put that here for I. So then we need four T. Now, the nice thing about this is I can just run through here, do long I plus T. Oh, well, if I'm not an idiot, um, it needs to go the other way. But I can do long I plus T on the edges. All right, and then we copy that guy, and now we've got our two by two with T's. Bam. So this is two X two CB with T. Icon is gonna be four, four meaning four sectors large. Um, Sweet. Okay. So we've got options. I probably should have rails at least on one of these. All right. Uh, what else do I need? I feel like this is pretty good. I feel like I'm missing something, but I don't know what. I mean, I guess the corners always being plus intersections it might mess me up a couple times, but I can always just deconstruct and, and build a T intersection in their place if I need to. And again, I can't think of a scenario where I need an L intersection because the only one we might need is an I intersection, but an I intersection is just a straight line and we already have the I section. So I can just delete everything and connect the rails if I need an I intersection. Because I already decided for the I intersection, we're not going to add any new signals. So it'll all fit together and I won't ever need to add or remove signals, which is the main goal. I guess the last thing I can do is add a station. So we already have, so let's, let's mess with our stations a little bit. So we've, that's an old model for the station itself. I'm not going to use that very often. Blank station is probably the most common. So that's a station with a combinator already attached. I should probably make this fit with the loading station magic combinator. So if this is here, okay, it looks like that does fit. So the combinators in the same place for both. So loading station magic is for the loading station itself. And that's what we attach to the inserters, red and green. So then I probably just want the warehouse to be part of the blueprint then. Um, Again, I could have it three squares because eventually my inserters will have three square range, but I think as we get faster and faster inserters, we're going to care less and less. We might even want it to be closer to use up less room. Um, I 
Yeah, I guess the... I guess having inserters here is fine. Because we can, we can modify the blueprint as we go. Um... I just, I'm, I'm determining, like, is it more work to just click a few blueprints each time, or is it more work to redo the main blueprint each time? No, this all goes fast enough. I think I'm happy with the way it is. Maybe I'll just add, that's what I'll do. For loading inserters, I'll just add a warehouse to that. Oh, and I also need to modify their drop tile position to be 45 degree friendly. Five, make sure that set filter is still selected because that we've learned that's a weird bug. Um, now it's worth asking, so that's, wow, look at that stack size, <laughs> 18. Um, so 77.14, does the offset change anything? 77.14. Ooh, there we go, 90. And that one is 77.14. It's interesting about the center. Still 77.14. But being all the way in that corner does change the speed to 90 per second. So we'll make sure those are all as fast as they can be. And we'll do the same for this. I think it was that corner, the closer corner. Okay, so then this is going to be unloading. What was the, I forget what the blueprint was called. Or no, this is loading inserters. Right, so new contents, bam, save. And then unloading inserters. We will also have, and I already changed this blueprint to be the angled on pickup and drop off um, in the last episode. Or no, I guess not in the last episode, but just when I was uh, you know, filling in the bricks and stuff for the city block we just made. Okay, so then I'll copy, or no, don't copy, just change blueprint. So unloading inserters, new contents, there. Okay, so now we've got loading and unloading separately. I'm an, hold on, I'm an idiot. Un momento. So for loading inserters, we have the wrong direction. The warehouse needs to be here because we're loading a train, not a warehouse. So then for loading inserters, we need to select new contents. Bam. All right. So that'll do it for the inserter warehouse stuff. Got that optimized a little better. And then I can just do blank station. Blank station. And so I'm going to delete this unload station. I'm not, never going to use that again. And this three train depot, I'm, I'm not going to need that anymore either. Corner bricks is still very useful. Um, so I think what I want... So loading station magic will go on to all loading stations. If it's an unloading station, I don't need any additional circuitry. And then I want an, so this is blank corner station. I'll just call it corner station. No need to name that it's blank. So this is a corner station. I also want to have an I station. So an I station is for a one by two or a two by two block, or sorry, a T station, a one by two or a two by two block that gloms onto um, a T a T intersection, and I want it to not interfere too much with the intersection. So like for this one. You actually turn off the main thoroughfare. You don't, it's not like you turn into it. 
So I should probably have it. Yeah, I mean, technically, this is something completely separate from the intersection. So I should have the same thing here. And then it just adds an extra signal afterwards. That's how that works. So here, how would I do that? So it would come up here, maybe. A little closer, just until it just misses that. Oh, wait. Okay, this way? No. Okay, there we go. And then it'll just be here. And then we will make it reattach as soon as possible. So then we'll have... Do I want to change? I think I want a regular signal there. Because, yeah, here he can happily enter here, even if he can't go through the whole intersection and wait to enter the intersection. What I should maybe do is have the entrance be at least one train length behind. So like back here. But that wastes more space for the station. I don't know if I like that or not. Because um, now, if I place, you know, a signal here and here, then there can be a train that's waiting to get through the intersection. Oh, I guess I need one here, which is still not enough space. Dang it. Because that's what I would want right there. So if he's going straight then he would still be allowed to enter to the right. Yeah, I don't I don't honestly think I like wasting all that space. My intersections are pretty fast. So I'm okay if a train has to wait for a second. It's not going to be waiting for long. So we'll just do that and have a regular signal here. And then we'll have a signal here, so we can have a train waiting to unload. I believe there's plenty of space for that. And then this will still be the same hookup so that it lines up with blank station and loading station magic. Put it as far forward as we can. There we go. So there can be a train waiting and a train there, and that still won't block the intersection. And that makes me happy. And then here, we even have enough space where we can have a train waiting to depart and then an entirely new train waiting there. So then this is a T. Intersection. So this is a T station. I can probably delete these offshoots. And delete all of that. This I need because it adds, that's a new signal. These are the two old signals. Okay, that should do it. So I've got a corner station and a T station. So this T station, oh, I didn't remove that guy. So I should be able to like run up to a T intersection and be like, okay, here's a new station. Bam. Yeah. The fact that my trains can't turn around is going to potentially make a lot of inefficiencies because like, you know, these stations are nice and small. They're very form factor fitting, you know, they don't they don't take up a lot of my city block space. But the issue is you can't get into the station from any direction. So I guess the final thing that we want is a plus station. I think what I want is if we know, I mean, I don't know how often I would ever use this. But maybe I should have a plus station 
where this kind of juts in, but then it provides the ability for trains to come from any direction. Is that worth it? Nah. My trains are going to be speedy. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. All right, so I think that's it. Unless I'm missing something, I've got all the all the station things that I want. Um, I've got my city block book. We've got corner and T stations. We've got our loading, unloading, inserters. And the loading station magic is what I need to paste for any stations that load items onto a train. We have the ability to get our bricks in the corner. For a city block, we can paste T junctions, four way junctions, I sections, long I sections, long I sections with a T in the middle. Now you might ask, what about a long I section with a plus in the middle? But that's not really necessary given the options I have for city blocks, I don't think. And I can always just add the plus, the four way exchange blueprint on top of the long I plus T if I really needed that. And these are the four different types of 1x2s and then 2x2s with T intersections and with straightaways. Sweet. I think that's it. I'm happy. These are all in my Cardax blueprint storage. And so I don't think I have to worry about that. I also have some old C block <laughs> Bob's and Angels blueprints that I used. This one I may end up using again because all the modules three through eight are kind of annoying to automate. And this is a nice little blueprint that makes all of them via belts. Uh, anyway, I don't know. We'll probably make it from scratch for the viewers sake. But there we are. All right. So that wraps up this special episode of Blueprint Train Goodness. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you all next time.